Hello everyone and welcome back to the Raise Aerospace International Space Station Assembly Series in Kerbal Space Program 1.3.1. In this episode we have STS-118 and STS-120. STS-118 is bringing up the S-5 truss, which is similar to the P-5 truss we previously placed in STS-116. This time it is the Space Shuttle Endeavour launching here. And of course launch script uh, basically does things exactly as it has done before, but it's always nice to see the shuttle launch anyway. Off go the boosters. Now, there is one little flaw here in that because we had previously done STS-116 and it's basically an identical mission, I used the same setup, basically I loaded the same craft file in the VAB and just changed which shuttle it was, the name tag, and went with it. But this particular mission originally, STS-116, had the docking port problem that I identified uh, with it being on the wrong node. So uh, we won't be able to dock this time, though I'll try and I'll show you that. But anyway, so there is that flaw. Otherwise, uh, the S-5 truss is a fairly small part. So what's mainly in the bay is Space Lab. So there is a Space Lab in the bay. And we will be, of course, bringing that back down. That's basically a fixed part of the shuttle at this stage. So we are in orbit, uh, though, of course, uh, low periapsis to help with rendezvous. And then we boost up the periapsis once we get to the station. And that's what we're doing here. It takes a long time with the OMS engines, but there we are. We're getting more efficient about uh, all the things, including docking. Uh, remember, because of reasons I don't understand, neither SAS nor Smart ASS can hold the shuttle steady if I control from the docking port. So the whole business of docking is a whole lot more complicated because I have to control from the cockpit, which is obviously not in the right orientation. So there's a lot of eyeballing, but I'm getting a little bit more used to it. And so you see here, carefully lining up and making sure that my yaw, well ahead of time, everything is sort of zeroed out and we are approaching in a way that I can easily correct the minor deviations once we get closer. So the S5 truss is just sort of a bracket at the end of the S4 truss, uh, which carries the solar panels. It basically braces the solar panels and prepares them for the arrival of the S6 truss, which carries more solar panels. So here we are approaching and closer but of course at this point i didn't recall that i really couldn't dock or maybe i did and i just tried it anyway uh, just in case it might work this was of course conducted during a twitch live stream and so live in front of a live studio audience not really a studio audience no uh, in front of a live audience and so the tension is high and there we are there's not really a whole lot of magnetism on these ports, so even if it were to work, it's tough. And yeah, you can see we're just sort of holding steady. I'm trying to fill around with it, turn it so that's a little bit better facing. Not quite there. We got a boink there, I think. Of course, if we boink too hard, we'll throw off the space station, so we don't want that. It's a little bit to the side. I'm trying to fix it. But it's all for naught, really. So, obviously, we didn't dock, and we're back to drones. Though, we would be using the drones regardless. And here comes the first one out of the bay. I'm mainly including these shots because they sort of look good. With the shuttle there, and the sun, and the earth, and everything. Very scenic. So, it got the truss. The truss is about 1.5 tons or something like that. And of course, the other tug has to go grab it as well. Even if it's a lightweight payload, it's still not a good idea to try and dock it when there's only one tug on. So it's always both tugs. Now, I had trouble finding where exactly it could grip the truss part. The collider was not exactly as I expected it, but we ultimately grabbed it. So all good. And on to the station, which is, as you see it right there. This mission is substantially easier than STS-120, the next one we're going to do, which brings up the Harmony module. That's complicated because the Harmony module has to go where the shuttle's docking adapter, the PMA, there is right now. And then that PMA has to go onto the Harmony module 
and STS-120 also involves the relocation of the P6 truss, so we'll see that in a bit. Nevertheless, the troublesome part of all of this is re-entry and landing, still. Um, in 1.1.3, the re-entry script was pretty solid, but there's something definitely wrong with it in 1.3.1, this version. And I haven't figured out how to get... It, it's fine through most of re-entry, it's just like at around 15 to 20 kilometers, it goes pretty bad. And I'm not too sure how to compensate for that. On this mission, we will have other problems though, and those are probably my fault, as you'll eventually see. So here we go, getting the little tugs back in. Again, mainly for the scenic views of the shuttle. As we approach and dock within the cargo bay. And you can see Space Lab there as well. Alright, so now it is time to come back and I was trying to figure out whether we were in line to come back and it didn't seem like it. And I waited a few days. I thought I would correct the orbits to catch up to where we needed to be and just couldn't get it right. Eventually I was forced down by the food limitations. We were running out of food. But that was apparently t too tired to calculate things properly or something. I don't know. I don't know what I was getting wrong at the time. But ultimately we're forced down and we are not quite on a trajectory for Cape Canaveral right now. So as we come down, we're actually coming down in the panhandle of Florida around Pensacola. So yeah, not the right place. Not, you know, entire continents off or anything, but still not the right place. Uh, I take control because I saw that the script was deviating, but it still has this huge side slip issue, as you can see, and I'm trying to get it back to the prograde vector here, but it doesn't want to go. And eventually the aerodynamic stress rips off the OMS pods, which I wouldn't think would be easy, but they're usually the first things to go off. So yeah, I don't know, I don't know why it has that side slip at that point. Yep, but ultimately we got the rest of it back down, not the OMS pods, landing in Florida just not in the right part of Florida. Still, um, the Kerbals survive, that's the important part. I really need to figure out what the heck is going on though. Anyway, next up, SDS-120 with the Shuttle Discovery. And this is again carrying the Harmony module, which is fairly heavy. So it doesn't have anything else in the bay except for the tugs and the docking port. And this time we have the right uh, docking port arrangement. So we can dock. But we're not going to dock. We're not going to dock because we have to move that docking port anyway. So there's no point docking. What's going to happen is that the Harmony module is going to be docked on the side of Unity first. And then, and in real life, what, the, what happened was the shuttle did dock at the PMA adapter and then used its arm to move the Harmony module to the Unity module with help from probably Canada Arm 2 on station. And then after the Harmony module was on the Unity module, the shuttle uh, undocked and then the station's Canada Arm 2 grabbed the PMA, the docking adapter, and moved it to the Harmony module's free port and then grabbed the Harmony module and put it onto the, um, the Destiny module that we currently have on the station where the docking port currently is. And then only after that did the shuttle once again dock. Uh, though we wouldn't need to do that here. But instead of going through all that, I asked the audience and we decided that it'd be just easier not to go through the docking procedure this time. Because we pretty much have to undock immediately anyway. So. The next docking we'll have to wait for next time, STS-122, we will dock and we'll be bringing up the Columbus module, the U uh, European lab. Okay, so just parking away from the station here and the tugs go to work, grabbing. Um, basically, the Harmony module is a lot like Unity. It's got docking ports all around. I actually, I think on the top and bottom, the real one doesn't have docking ports, but I put them anyway. Uh, that will be for future usage. After all, I'm not building the International Space Station for nothing. 
and we will see what kind of purpose we get out of it. I imagine I will have plans. And those may require more docking ports, so well, that's why I put them on. Okay, so... We've got the module with the two tugs, and we're bringing it towards the station now. Now again, it has to get onto the Unity module, which is sort of in a tight position, and I forgot about the radiators currently blocking the way. I managed to slow um, this module down, Harmony, in time, but we need to get those radiators in, so retraction. That's a nice retraction animation because they're staggered, I like that. And then we can slip it towards Unity, which is targeted right there now. And here is the final phase of docking. And the thugs are going to get quite a workout today. So there's this docking and then the PMA move and then moving Harmony back over to Destiny and then they have to move the P6 Trust to where it needs to go, finally. I don't know why they decided to make this the, like, the busiest station construction mission, but basically it is. At least if we're talking about the large parts, of course, um, other missions might have had a lot more to do with uh, smaller parts and various minor modules that we aren't covering during this assembly. Lots of EVAs involved. Sometimes it's all about the details. Speaking of details, I couldn't grab the actual adapter part, the black part there. I had to try and grab the edge of the docking port here. The collider on the adapter part just was too awkward for the grabber unit. So, this is how we grabbed it and placed it onto, onto the Harmony module. Trying to make sure to get the orientation right and everything. Okay, so that's on. And then now we grab the Harmony module. And really, uh, if there's any mission that I was dreading trying to use Canada Arm on, both Canada Arms on, this is definitely the one. So we have to uh, imagine doing all this with the Canada Arms. I mean, some, maybe some people are good with Canada Arms. I'm not good with Canada Arms. Uh, so all this would have to be done with the Canada Arms, and you'd have to sort of visualize how to turn the arm in exactly the right way to get things on. And then, of course, there's the P6 uh, truss docking after this. So, my trusty little tugs still haven't used half of their fuel, amazingly enough. And... Of course, in real life, you wouldn't want their thrusters blasting everything on the station, but... In this case, it's okay. And there we have it. So, Harmony is on with the docking port, and now we are grabbing the P6 truss, which has been placed on top of the station this whole time. Interestingly, it took them a while to get the S6 truss on. That's the opposite number to this P6 truss. Uh, that was launched on STS-119. So for those who don't know the shuttle numbering system, they're numbered basically based on when they were planned, not when they actually launched. This is STS-120, and this occurred on October 23rd, 2007. STS-119 was planned ahead of this one, but uh, launched on March 15th, 2009. So that's uh, one year and five months, basically, after this. So yeah, that, that's quite a long time for them to get the Essex Truss up here. And also interesting to me is that it also launched on the Shuttle Discovery. And Discovery had another mission before it brought the Essex Truss up. Uh, it brought the Gem Module... Uh, the Japanese module up, so yeah, I'm I'm interested to know why it was that STS-119 was so delayed. It must have been the truss itself and the solar arrays, because the shuttle was clearly ready to go. Anyway, so we've done all the repositioning and the tugs are coming back in, and uh, hopefully we will get the timing right for the return this time. I don't know what happened on the previous mission. Usually, I'm not bad on the timing. 
Okay, so here we're in. And we are pulling away from the station into the standby orbit, which is one and a half hours. Now, if I could get the re-entry script to come back down from an arbitrary orbit, that would make things even more efficient. But right now, it's expecting basically a one and a half hour orbit before it starts out. So here it's doing the retro burn to bring it to the re-entry periapsis. We still have plenty of fuel. Right now we're doing good on fuel margins. That at least seems to have been something that I've managed to fix. So here we are, orienting properly. It wiggles around still. That's one thing I haven't fixed is that uh, from the time it enters the atmosphere to about 110 kilometers, it waggles back and forth in the roll axis and then settles down. In theory, knows the heading to Cape Canaveral and tries to turn that way. But I'm not too sure it does a great job on that, to be honest. It's trying, though. In this case, it spent so long deflecting, basically trying to do part of an S-turn to turn towards Cape Canaveral, that it ended up landing short. Oh, well, it was going short here. And because it was going short, I contemplated taking control earlier than before in order to see if I could maintain its pitch and try to get a better glide angle to extend ourselves closer to the KSC. And uh, here I'm switching to surface because I was worried about the side slip again, but no, we're actually in line with the surface velocity there. As you can see, it was just the orbital velocity we were off by. And yeah, so uh, coming down, I remember what happened last time, and I wondered if if I took control earlier, would I be able to keep it stable, or stabler than it uh, was last time? And the answer is no. You can see it's sort of slipping off to the left here. And maybe that's just... Maybe you've heard that the shuttle is sort of unstable without the fly-by-wire. You can't fly it without the fly-by-wire, and I guess we're sort of in that part. But on the other hand, SAS sort of serves as a fly-by-wire in a weird way. In the end, the point is, it seems to want to slip to the left one way or another no matter what I do, and I haven't figured out why. Ultimately, I recovered by pointing straight at the ground and gathering speed like that. The engines don't do anything, I'm just dumping fuel like that. They're not actually helping us accelerate to any substantial degree. And, of course, we will pull up, but we have some time there. I do have atmospheric autopilot, but it doesn't like the shuttle at all. It, it does not do any good things with the shuttle, so I never use that with it. It seems to have serious problems. Anyway, so ultimately, we're landing in Tampa, so uh, today we have two landings in Florida, but not in the right parts of Florida, so still working on that. Obviously, I managed it before landing at the runway, and it was getting closer, so I don't know what's happened, really. Well, on the previous mission, I know what happened. The timing on re-entry was off. But this time, I... Uh, well, I must have tweaked something in the re-entry script that went awry. So, with this landing, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.